Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the UBC Learning Circle. Uh, we're thrilled to be here today with Icepark, the FNHA, and the BC Sports Hall of Fame to have our final conversation in the series on Indigenous sport and well-being. Joining us in circle today are young athletes Taya Sutil, Hunter Lang, Jonathan Fraser Monroe, and Garnett Curry. Moderated by Janine Erickson, this final session will feature these young Indigenous athletes, all of whom were awarded the Premier's uh, Award for Indigenous Youth Excellence in Sport in celebration of their outstanding achievements and leadership qualities both on and off the field. So before I get into anything else, I would like to acknowledge that I'm zooming in from the traditional and ancestral territories of the Comox First Nation. I would also like to acknowledge the First Nations Health Authority for generously funding the UBC Learning Circle, allowing us to, to have these conversations. A uh, gentle reminder here today, the topics we cover can sometimes be sensitive or emotionally triggering. Please make sure that you're looking after yourself. If at any point you feel that you need to talk to a friend or an elder or a counselor or a family member, please don't hesitate to access that support network. Uh, very brief introductions. My name is Cole, I'm from the Chowthal First Nation. I'm sharing our digital space today, but off camera is Cynthia, our production coordinator. Um, and before I hand the mic over to uh, Janine to introduce herself and, and kind of get us started, I would like to say that if you feel so inclined, please introduce yourself in the chat box. We'll get that kind of dialogue rolling and um, please be sure to log your questions in that space as well. So without further ado, uh, Janine, do you want to take it away? Uh, yeah, Hadi, thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you, Cole, for the housekeeping and Cynthia for your technical and logistical support. Leading up to this session as well, um, very much appreciated. A uh, big thank you to our friends at iSpark, UBC Learning Circle, and the BC Sports Hall of Fame for supporting Indigenous athletes and holding space like this to capture the vibrancy and wisdom of our people's truths and experiences. Uh, my name is Janine Erickson. I'm a Dekat woman from Nakazli Muten, a Northern BC First Nations community and adopted member of the Takaya Wolf Clan FNHA family. Um, I am zooming in from the traditional unceded territory of the Silks people, uh, whose ancestors have lived here in the Okanagan Nation since time immemorial. Um, I am honored to serve BC First Nations and First Nations in BC in my role in partnership development and initiatives in the office of the Chief Medical Officer at the First Nations Health Authority, um, I have a master's in public health and I'm passionately involved in our wellness initiatives as well as quality, cultural safety and humility and Indigenous specific anti-racism work. I've done a lot of running and uh, triathlons in my days and so I'm honored and excited to be asked to moderate this session with all of you and, um, and this bright panel that we have here today. Um, so with that, I am going to turn it to them. Um, we'll do brief introductions, brief introductions by each of them, and then we'll come back around the circle to deep dive a little bit more. Um, I'm going to start with Hunter Lang. If you can introduce yourself briefly and, and um, where you're calling in from and, and just anything you'd like to share. Hi, everyone. My name is Hunter Lang, as you can see. Um, I'm currently living on Musqueam territory, but my family comes from Squalix First Nation, which is located around Lillooet, BC, but I've grown up my whole life in Port Moody. Um, I am going into my third year at UBC studying political science, and I've been a competitive athlete pretty much my entire life in the sport of softball and soccer primarily, but I also did a lot of Taekwondo and extracurriculars on the side like track and field, some swimming, some tennis, some golf, did a little bit of everything to kind of find my passion and um, I really enjoyed playing soccer and softball so that's primarily the sports I'll be talking about today. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me to um, speak here today from the UBC Learning Circle. Um, hopefully I can answer all the questions to the best of my ability. That's awesome, Hunter. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn to Garnet. Hmm. Hello there. Uh, my name is Garnet Curry. Um, I'm from Quinnell, BC. I was born and raised here. And currently, I, well, it's summertime. So back once it's September, I'll be headed back for my fourth year down at UBC. 
and I'm majoring in biology right now with hopes of going into optometry. And so for my sports, I've um, been a competitive swimmer for about 11 years now. So that's the sport I'll be talking about and how that's all been a play in school and a big part of my life. Thanks, Garnet. Um, I'm going to circle back to that passion of um, how you found yourself in optometry too. That's cool. Um, let's hear from Jonathan. Hi, my name is uh, Jonathan Fraser Monroe. Uh, I live in the unceded territory of the Sioux Nation, um, and my family is from the Tlamin First Nation near Powell River. Uh, I'm currently in grade 11. Uh, at W.L. Seton Secondary School. And uh, yeah, I'll be speaking about my experiences in basketball, volleyball, and soccer. And uh, yeah, I'm also a basketball coach as well. So that's what I'll be speaking about today. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and definitely not least, uh, but uh, an important completion of our circle, Taya. Hello, my name is Taya Suttle. Um, I'm from Surrey, BC, um, but I'm currently calling in from Saskatchewan, actually. I'm working on my grandparents' farm, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I am a proud Métis athlete with roots from the Red River settlement of Manitoba. Um, my main sports are soccer and basketball, um, but similar to Hunter, I um, competed in swimming, volleyball, uh, track and field, cross country, lots of different things. Um, I will be entering my second year at Simon Fraser University this September uh, for a uh, biology major uh, as well. And I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you everyone for introducing yourselves. And um, we'll move into the storytelling portion of our session. Um, where we can do a little bit of a deeper dive in that. So uh, once more, we'll go around the ring um, and we'll start with you, Hunter. Just um, maybe let us know uh, a little bit more about yourself and tell us about your athletic journey. Um, I know a, a number of you kind of had a couple of uh, sports that got weaved into your journey. So feel free to tell us about that as well. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I definitely got started with sports at a very young age um, and it all really began with soccer and taekwondo when I was four years old. Um, I wouldn't even call it sports back then. It was just kind of running around on a field trying to kick a ball. Um, I remember I scored a lot on my own net, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it sports, but I did get started with soccer and taekwondo at the age of four and I fell in love with soccer and, you know, Taekwondo was bearable at the time for me. I wasn't that great at it. It was a little scary sparring other kids, <laughs> getting punched and whatnot. But um, it's definitely what kickstarted my athletic journey. Um, when I was about five or six years old, that's when I learned what softball was and I really did not like it. I was scared of the ball and my dad wouldn't accept that. So we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one practices. He would just keep throwing the ball at me until I realized it didn't hurt that much if I got hit. So um, it took me about a year or two to get out of that fear, but I stuck with it. And um, I've been playing softball ever since, right up until I graduated from high school. Um, yeah, I had dreams of going to play college ball. Um, that didn't end up happening, but we could talk about that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, mostly soccer and softball have been uh, my primary sports. And I really just got into it because my parents gave me the opportunity to go and play these sports. And they signed me up for it at a really young age. And it, it's just been a huge part of my life for as long as I can remember. That's great. Thank you, Hunter. Um, Garnet, would you like to share? Yeah, so for me, my sport was swimming. Uh, I started swimming in a summer club 
when I was about seven years old. It was, it was one of those summers where my mom just kind of wanted me out of the house, start getting out there doing something. And yeah, so I, I started out there and it was about three years I was in a summer swim club and I had definitely a lot of memorable experiences even at that really young age um I had a couple a couple times where we had an opportunity as a club to have a couple Olympians come in and swim with us and kind of show their own techniques and kind of just get to know them have fun so stuff like that was pretty cool and definitely these top athletes like world athletes coming in at you know 10 years old of course I'm gonna look up to them because and literally look up to them because they were freakishly tall and then uh after that summer club there was a winter um swim club that opened up and I decided to join that and definitely um my coach had a pretty significant in, impact. I, I'd say his his passion for the sport definitely rubbed off onto me. His his way of thinking about the the sport was really really interesting. So, I remember that first year, and we were trying to like really get to know him, get acquainted and such. And he always had like really cool ways of like getting us motivated to because with with swimming the thing is it's a very very technical sport so if there was a new technique a new drill he'd always like get us really motivated to to learn it and and try to apply that to our strokes to like if turning or diving anything like that and eventually practice it so much it becomes an essential part of our racing or anything like that and then um so moving on throughout high school and into university um a major thing i'd say is definitely um trying to learn the balance and trying to hold it all together because at that level High school and sports, they do kind of go hand in hand. So they they do um, affect your, like there's a lot of stress, stress that kind of came into play with high school and university for sure. So going into sports kind of helped me. It kind of helped me take my mind off things. And when I'm, I was always succeeding at swimming and at school, setting all these goals for myself so in that sense it definitely helped quite a bit did you find that it it like your goal setting or your training uh helped you understand how to make goals for yourself in university yeah absolutely um just eh, trying to apply different techniques in in school and in swimming for school for sure like going into university very very different from high school so I definitely had to adapt to a new mindset new new ways of trying to better myself and and practice up for those you know those finals exams or whatever was on my way so um in that sense yeah definitely and then in university, um, so I went down to Vancouver and UBC there. And so I left my Quinell Swim Club and I joined the Vancouver Pacific Swim Club. And my head coach down there, his name was Brian Johns. And he actually was a two-time Olympian. So... And the funny thing is, I actually had remembered him from one of those early on training camps when I was like a really, really young starting off swimmer. So that was pretty cool. Like he he became my coach in the future. That was that was pretty awesome, pretty memorable. So and that 
the university swimming was very much different from the high school swimming like another big obstacle that i'd say was kind of it was nice to find that balance once again after adjusting going into university so it was yeah it was a lot of fun and then going and competing all around through the lower mainland and seeing just how like how many other swimmers that were kind of doing the same thing as me it was really really cool all these other university level swimmers it was so many different experiences there starts to converge yeah exactly <laughs> Well, thank you, Garnet, for sharing. You're welcome. Um, we'll come back around again um, because we've got some more questions for you all. Uh, Jonathan, can you share with us a little bit about your athletic journey? Yeah, for sure. Well, my start to my athletic journey was probably a lot different from a lot of other people. Um, before I was a high-level athlete, I was actually a, a very high-level dancer. Um, and I competed um, lots of different styles like jazz, ballet, um, and I, yeah, I went to provincials two times um, in, in dance. So yeah, that was, that was really where I felt my, my competitive spirit and drive started was, was not actually really in sport, but it was in dance. Um, and I remember the first time uh, that I saw sports, I think was in like grade five, uh, I started playing hockey. Um, and in basically every sport that I started, I knew that I was not like, I did not have the technique or anything, but I had, I had, um, an advantage over a lot of kids because I was, because I had that dance training and that ballet technique, um, and that control over my body. Um, so I was able to do things and I, it's actually, I think why I'm in sport now is because I had that dance training before. Um, um, and yeah, so I was able to, to play hockey as a goalie because goalie in hockey requires lots of flexibility. Um, and as I got older, I started to want to explore more sports and, um, in grade six, uh, I had moved to Harwood. I was in the late French immersion program. Um, and the boys there, they love to play soccer. So I figured, hey, why don't I just join in? <laughs> and I actually ended up falling in love with it again. Um, and then, yeah, in grade six, I, I tried out for the rep team. And once again, I did not have the technical aspects um, of the sport, but I ended up playing goalie again. Um, and actually, I developed and now I play, um, I play in the outfield now. So, um, yeah, I think that that drive and that, um, mental strength to be able to work hard that I learned from my dance training really applies into my sports now. Um, and then, yeah, it, like it, there's many stories as I play three, three different sports right now. Um, and yeah, basketball was just falling in love again on the Harwood Harwood playground, just shooting, sh shooting hoops. And I ended up actually joining the silk basketball team. And that's where I started to find that drive. Once again, uh, was with Peter Wardenberg down and at the lower smoke mean Indian band, um, just playing basketball. And that's actually how I got into, into basketball, which is now my main sport. Um, and yeah, volleyball, once again, just playing at school, putting myself out there. Um, and that's what, that's, I think what I really enjoy is, is being to being able to put myself out there, uh, in, in all these different ways. Yeah. And having that confidence based on all your dance training and the strength that you have to just, okay, I'll try it, pick it up. Yeah. And I think that's one of the really cool things about dance and what it taught me is in dance, because it is an art, you can't fail. Um, and I, I think that transferred really into sports because in, in sports, that mentality is like, oh, you score the goal or you don't. Um, but not really realizing that that isn't always the goal. Sometimes you're going to miss. Um, but you had the opportunity. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that, that having that experience with the arts 
really helped me develop as an athlete into who I am right now. But yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing that. And I'll probably want to come back to that on another question because uh, between your dancing and Hunter, I think your Taekwondo, uh, there's a discipline there in terms of um, those techniques that Garnet, you were also talking about that discipline to the technique in order to excel at your sport. So I'm going to come back on that one. Uh, Taya, can you share with us your athletic journey? Absolutely. Um, so my athletic journey began at a fairly young age um, with the sport of softball. Um, and instantly, um, I knew that sport was going to be a passion of mine. I just loved it. Um, um, so after about a year or so of softball, I also began to play softball. This was different for me. I loved the running around and um, I also love the rain and rain is, is soccer weather. So it kind of worked out. Um, yeah, and um, over the years, uh, soccer became quite competitive for me. Uh, after about a year of playing just house level, I was uh, chosen for a select team and then later for a metro level soccer team. Um, and lots of amazing tournaments through soccer in BC, uh, in the United States as well. So some amazing experiences there. Um, and then in 2016, I joined uh, the U15 girls uh, Fraser Region Indigenous soccer team. And we competed at the BC uh, Indigenous Provincial Soccer Championships. And we won gold. And that was super exciting <laughs> uh, because um, with winning gold, we were chosen to represent British Columbia um, at the North American Indigenous Games. Um, and um, also at uh, NAG, North American Indigenous Games, uh, we won gold for U16 female soccer. And oh my goodness, that was just so exciting. And the experience was amazing, um, flying out to Toronto and just strengthening friendships with your teammates and connecting with athletes from across North America. Um, and we also stayed in, in uh, university dorms, dormitories. So that was, it was so exciting. Yeah, and the opening ceremonies, oh my goodness. <laughs> really great experience there. Um, and so a couple of years later, uh, I was selected for the U18 uh, Fraser Region girls team uh, to be a captain of that team. Uh, we competed at the provincials again and won gold. Um, but, and we were supposed to go to NAG 2020, but unfortunately due to COVID, so it was a bit sad, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so some amazing highlights and memories with my soccer. Um, also during um, high school, I competed in basketball as well. And this was, um, oh, it was very competitive. I didn't expect this from a high school team, uh, but it was practice every day on the weekends. Uh, if we didn't have tournaments, summer break, winter break, lots of work, but, um, I, I really loved it because it felt good to put in the hard work to just grow and improve as an athlete. Um, so that was really awesome. And um, yeah, some really amazing experiences and I'm excited to see what happens next. Thank you. Love it. You got bright features ahead of all of you guys. Thank you for sharing that initial part. and. Um, uh, I want to invite our audience to also um, put forward some questions that they might have for any of you. Um, but in the meantime, I was actually, um, Taya, your, your story made me think, you know, we're all uh, starting to get on this other side of COVID, but um, as high performing athletes, like what have you guys done to stay in shape? Like, 
I know that people are struggling <laughs> a little bit all over. So there might have been a little bit of a, you know, but uh, I know that the pools had closed down for a while and, and those kinds of things. So maybe we can talk about what you guys, how you guys managed to um, keep your keep your health and wellness up and um, whether or not you had any breaks in there, was that needed? Did you get some rest time in there? And, and how do you, how do you kind of keep it up? Cause this was kind of a long break for all of us. So if you could share your insights on that, that'd be great. Hunter, do you mind going first or do you want to? Yeah, sure. I can go first. Um, awesome. But I first just want to quickly say that Taya, I didn't know you back then, but I watched your gold winning game at the 2017 NAG and it was awesome. Like I love watching soccer. It was such a fun game to watch. Um, I was so proud of you guys. <laughs> I didn't know you, but I was so proud. It was awesome to watch. Um, but yeah, getting back to your question, Janine, um, about <laughs> COVID and how that's really affected athletes, I guess, personally, um, definitely a, a big dip in my life, just a huge change in lifestyle, um, especially at the time it came in our lives while we're still young and we're still like doing so much on a day-to-day -day basis. It was just a major change. Definitely took some adjustments, um, but overall, I guess what I'm trying to say is I tried to make lemonade out of lemons, you know that saying? Um, just tried to put my best foot forward with online school and just trying to keep an open mind about everything, not trying to get too down, um, really focusing on just doing the best that I could do during like these unprecedented circumstances, right? That's really all we could do. And with regards to sports, you know, I, I chose not to play softball once softball was up and running with all the COVID-19 uh, return to play restrictions. But because of my living situation and all the, the visits with my grandparents and stuff, they were part of our bubble. I really just, didn't want to take that risk for them. So I chose not to play and it, it did kind of suck because that was like my main opportunity to see my friends and stuff. But um, overall we lived with the decision and I still feel really good about it. I just do stuff on my own, whether it's going for runs, taking my dog out for lots of walks, going for hikes, really just trying to enjoy the extra time that I get to spend with my family. So it was a very big lifestyle change, but overall tried to stay in decent shape definitely not my tip top you know soccer cardio great shape it's just it's different but um tried to make it enjoyable this past year thanks hunter that was really great insight and just making those adjustments and accommodations and being able to be flexible you know life life i mean this kind of a weird life but you know life comes at you uh, I don't think any of us were predicting a global pandemic, but athletes, man, you roll with it. It's awesome. Garnet, would you like to share some of the, I am curious on the swimming aspect. Yeah, the, the whole swimming part was, that was kind of hard to deal with. So in March there in 2020, I had just gotten off of a pretty big provincial meet and then came back to university after that in that week there yeah it was kind of weird like it was kind of a recovery week from that big meet so just sort of like hanging in there kind of focus on school throughout that week just recovering in general and then all of a sudden it was that weekend it was like okay gotta go home you know it COVID hit into the pandemic self-isolation all that so got home got organized got all my stuff out of my dorm all packed up and then once I had all my school stuff figured out for the path for the next month because there were still exams and stuff so they kind of you know gave us stuff to work on leaning up to the exams all good there so and then yeah I just sort of tried my best to like just YouTube stuff, look for home workout ideas. I actually, I went into my garage there and I just like put down a carpet. I set up a whole bunch of weights and stuff. And I just, yeah, I just kept myself 
active every every single day for sure and yeah and then once it was kind of summer and then like online school like here and here and there throughout um my like small hometown we have like a couple of lakes so if I wanted to swim I could just like go to the lake and and do a swim just like an open water one and then but once online school started up again in September there was a couple months there I don't remember the pool being open but then it did open and I I started getting into it again started swimming a little bit more and more but as it was definitely a little bit harder to kind of prioritize training time. And that was more just to do with how my school schedule was, but also the like pool schedule. Cause they had to like self or like self distance themselves inside the pool. Right. So like here and there, like they can't have a huge maximum in this one and it's a pretty small town like it's pretty small pool too so they can only have like one two people in every lane so if I there was some days where I just I just had to only go to the gym because I look in the pool and they're full you know so it was it was kind of hard that way to really say okay do I gotta start going in the mornings like where in the day can I fit in some training time you know so it was really hard that way That's awesome. Thanks for sharing some of that, that pieces, but like, I'm watching how you try to find a ma- way to make it work. And, yeah. and cause ultimately you got to keep your fitness up and, and uh, be ready to get back in when you can get back in. Jonathan, yeah. how'd it go for you? Well, yeah, it was a pretty emotional swing for me um, because right before actually the time that I heard about COVID, I was performing um, in the 2020 Inspire Awards. Um, so I actually remember, um, I was with my dad and he was, he was telling me like, wow, we might just want to bump elbows with people today. Cause I hear there's this, this really bad virus that's going around. And I remember that was the last time that I shook anybody's hand was actually at the 2020 Inspire Awards. And this was, really hard for me because this was in the middle of my competition season. Um, Like I literally, I came back the weekend from Inspire. I took an early flight at 5 a.m. from Ottawa and then I landed in, in Kelowna airport. I went like literally right across the road to UBCO and I played in a volleyball tournament. but yeah, it was it was very emotional because right when COVID hit, it was my heaviest competition season. And obviously we had NAG coming up um, for a lot of us. We had lots of other opportunities that were coming up. Like, um, so it was, it really felt like going from a hundred to zero in seconds. Um, and honestly, I was a little bit happy at the start because my body was like, I push my body so hard because I play three different sports, um, that it was nice to get a little bit of a break, but then it just kept going and it just kept going. And, um, I remember thinking like, okay, we've got this deadline. Hopefully if we just keep doing everything right, we can get there. And I think that's the only thing that, that really helps me to keep training. A lot of the time is just having faith, um, that we're going to get back to it we're going to, we're going to push through this. Um, and that really, that really gave me hope. Uh, and that's what pushed me to keep training. And then the other thing was seeing that there weren't many leaders around me. And I, one of the things that actually helped motivate me to train was coaching. And I was at the time I was coaching the, yeah, last year it would have been the grade eight boys basketball team and I was I was seeing and I'm like I'm friends with these kids um like I'm friendly because I'm I'm close to their age um and I could see that these guys were down in the dumps all the time so I actually started creating training programs for these different kids um to help them improve to feel like they had something to do 
um, that there's there's still hope. There's still some somebody there who's gonna to believe in you, to work hard with you, uh, and that really reflected onto myself. And I I started doing more physical training than I had actually actually before COVID and anything like that hit. But yeah, I think I think the other way that I got through this is like really there was nothing else to do besides go sh shooting hoops out front on the on my on my hoop so um i think really what got me through is just faith that we're gonna see another day and i think i was really lucky that i was young enough to be able to see that i'm gonna have another day like this is i'm still going to have my moments um but yeah that's that's what what really helps me get through through the pandemic but yeah these are important insights because i think uh, athletes you have in all of your training like uh contrary to popular belief <laughs> we don't always want to get in that pool we don't always want to go and do that that training you know it's not always fun so so that ability to focus and and like you say visualize um another day on uh, the future and, and being able to do that and still apply yourself is like such good um good mental training like it it's 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 part of your resilience it's part of what helps you persevere some of these some of these times Taya can you share with us your absolutely um so for me um COVID kind of struck actually during my graduating year of high school. So uh, I went home from spring break and then I didn't come back to school. Um, it was, for me, it was nice initially because it was a break. Um, and I was really lazy. I was like just chilling and eating and for a little while. <laughs> Um, but then I, I knew I had to get back into it because Neg was coming. Um, and so um, what helped me a lot actually was um, my sister. She had um, gym class. And so she was supposed to do something every day and she didn't want to, um, but we kind of motivated each other and got out every day. And as we did more, we like expanded it each day just doing more going here bike rides playing basketball shooting hoops and it was amazing just it felt good to get back out there um kind of without any stress as well um with like nothing competitive or anything like that just getting out there and exercising felt really good um and yeah kind of just continued with that um, unfortunately, tournaments and preparation for NAG was all postponed and then eventually canceled. Um, but I just tried my best to get out uh, with runs and in any way I could to just stay active and be prepared for hopefully when NAG came. But yeah. Thanks, Taya. <clears throat> I have. Um... I have a couple questions from um, the group uh, and just kind of looking at um, your influence of the family. Um, I've got one specific question for Taya, uh, specifically does working on your family farm contribute to your fitness and how does that fit with all your other training? And then uh, just a question to the group uh, because I don't know, uh, but that, that piece about siblings and um, how does siblings uh, contribute or, or um, add or change how you look at sport, how you look at your sport, how you, how you work with them, or are they older than you, or those kinds of things, like those, those connections, if you could share that, that'd be great. Tay, I'll start with you with that one. Absolutely. Um, so for the farming, um, yes, absolutely. It's keeping me in good shape um, lots of lifting and lots of walking kind of working with the cows and getting them to move around and um, so that's been really good um, right now I don't have any sports going on so I don't need to worry about any conflicts so that's pretty good 
Um, but yeah, it's definitely exciting. It's my first time working out here, um, but some pretty amazing experiences. Um, and then relating to back to um, siblings, um, my sister is younger than me. Uh, we are 16 months apart, so fairly close in age, uh, which really works good when um, we can kind of like push each other because we're so close in age. And we can also kind of be hard on each other too, like, hey, I know you can do better than that. Come on. Or if one's being a little bit lazier. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Or it's kind of a competition too. It's like, no, you can't be better than me at that. And so it's, it's really good in motivating and getting me going. Um, awesome. I don't know if uh, anybody else wants to answer that question. I just, I know that um, I didn't have a really close uh, sport related relationship with my sister, uh, but, but then I had a few friends that would be like really involved in the sport that I kind of lean on that support network to, to kind of do, do all my pieces when I was younger. But um, anybody else have a, a family or family or friend story, Jonathan. Yeah, so uh, my brother is not really, not really into sports, but my brother is actually um, a professional dancer currently, and he is also a professional dance choreographer. Um, and I think we've always been a little bit competitive with each other. And we also, I think, inspire each other a lot of the time. And seeing that he was still putting work into into his craft um, and seeing him inspired to do something every day was also inspiring to me. Um, and I think a little bit vice versa, like I'd be on the basketball hoop for three, four hours a day. Um, and I think that, that Cameron saw that as well. Uh, and he would push just that little bit harder. So it, it wasn't even comparable in sports at all. Um, but it was definitely just to, to keep pushing forward in our own way, regardless if it was comparable or not. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, um, he, yeah, he was actually in Winnipeg before the pandemic. Um, and then he did come home. Um, but yeah, like uh, that was the first time that I'd seen him and really like lived with him in a long time because he was training at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. Um, and yeah, he was in the aspirant program at that time. Um, but yeah, it was the first time that I'd seen him because he had left when he was um, just a year younger than I was, that I am now. Um, so that it was really nice to rebuild that connection with him. Um, and it also helped in, in a sports aspect as well, uh, of just pushing forward, keep, keep going, so yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Hunter Garnet. Uh, yeah, so for me, I have two younger sisters, and I think once that um, winter club started up about two, three years later, uh, both my sisters did actually join. So throughout all my high school years, they also went to like the same swim meets throughout the province that I did. And then once I went into university, they kept swimming and um, they also, both of them also play softball right now too. So actually just last year, they were both selected to go to uh, NAG as well for softball. And that was, that was pretty awesome. Uh, my youngest sister, Gavin, I do believe was selected for the swimming, but she wanted to go for the softball as well. And But she's, I think in 2023 or the next year that they have Nick, I think both of them are, I think Grace might be too old, my, my, older, my older sister there. But yeah, Gavin should she I think she still has a shot at going to Nag, which is pretty cool to see as well especially because you know I went and then now she's going she's gonna have some great experiences and we can kind of have some very similar memories and experiences really cool to see there so 
definitely very proud of though. Absolutely. We've all kind of kept each other in the sport. I remember many, many early mornings, you know, dead of the winter and grade 12, getting up at like 530 in the pool at six. And then we'd swim all morning, come back home, quick bite to eat. And then we're off to school. And then in grade 12 there, I was driving. So I was, I was always kind of driving my sisters to school as well. So yeah, they, they definitely played a big part in my swimming career. And yeah, that, that family support absolutely is much needed. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Garnet. Hunter, did you want to share? Um, yeah, sure, I can talk a little bit about it. Um, I have an older sister. Um, she's five years older than me. So quite the big age gap. Um, and with regards to sports, <laughs> our relationship is, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to like pave my own path. And my mom's always telling me, don't do it because your sister did it, or don't just follow your sister. It's okay. Be your own person. <laughs> and um, a lot of the time I am, but I still look up to her a lot. She's definitely one of my role models. When it came to soccer, you know, she was way better at soccer than I was. You know, I was playing competitively, but not at the top level. And she was really great at soccer so it was always trying to you know do better and she would always push me to be better and then I would join softball at a young age and she'd come and watch my games and she'd be like you know what I could do that too and so she joined a couple of years later too so it's really I feel like even though she's older than me too we both play a role in like looking up to each other and just uh supporting each other in all of our athletic endeavors but um she was definitely a big role model for me academically as well just um super high achieving and, <laughs> and you know it's kind of those things where ugh, if she can do it then I must be able to do it too so yeah great relationship both academically and athletically with my sister oh that's awesome um <clears throat> I'm really I'm I'm <laughs> I'm in awe while I'm doing this. And then at the same time, I'm trying to like do my part of the job here, but I'm like, Hey, you guys are like, really, um, you really in like, um, your connections are really strong. And a couple of you are already coaching and you're like, <laughs> I'm like, you're still so young. Like, that's just so amazing. And I just wonder, um, a lot of you uh, talked about your uh, connection with Neg and, and Inspire and all of these different uh, pieces. And I wonder if you might talk about how your sport, how you feel your sport connects you to culture. Um, what's it like to, you know, be on an uh, all native team or what's it like to, to go to these tournaments where you are representing uh, yourself, your family, your community. Um, yeah, so that that connection, because sometimes uh, it becomes those pretty words, but tell us, like, what does it feel like? What does it look like? What is it? Something that kind of like when you think about it, what does that come to you as? Like, I ended up making it really, really big and broad, so you can do anything in that, but <laughs> if anyone wants to... Um, have a say at that, Jonathan, and then Hunter. Okay, so uh, my real connection to um, it, to that sort of area that you're talking about is through probably uh, the Junior All Native Basketball Tournament. Um, and I don't, I like, I don't live on reserve uh, or anything like that. I don't have tons and tons of connections, um, or I didn't have tons and tons of connections before I started playing. Um, junior all native basketball with the with the Sioux nation um and actually that was one of my favorite tournaments and it is one of my favorite tournaments because there's so much more than just a basketball game in in that in that in that gym like it, it is so competitive uh and i remember being in that environment for the first time and um i loved it i absolutely loved it um, 
but yeah, uh, that was sort of my first, first sort of connection with that sort of thing. And I have now so many friends, um, that are all around the province now, um, because of that connection over, over this sport, um, and, and over identity as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've got, I've got great friends now in, in West Kelowna. Um, and really, I think it was very important for me, um, to see and have all of these now aunties in, um, in, in lower Similkameen I mean, to have that, that sort of community and connection. I think, um, that, that sports really brought me together, um, with those people. And I found that really cool. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think unity run sort of falls under a different category, but, um, that's another one that I would, that I would like to speak on at some point. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Finish that. Oh, Cause okay, that, yeah. I, I know that that's a thread, but that's, yeah. that's an important one. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, for the last two times that we've run, which was this year and the year before that, I participated in the Silk Unity Run, which is a run around um, violence and suicide awareness. Um, and I was actually asked um, and encouraged to run by those people that I met at the Junior All Native Tournament and um, who are on my, my Silk basketball team. Um, and they encouraged me to join because I had no idea what was going on. Um, and I, I didn't really have a, a community connection before I'd really went to that junior all native tournament. But um, I think that suicide and violence awareness is something that's really important to me and as well our communities. Um, and it is super important. Um, yeah, so I, I figured it would be a good thing for me to participate in um, because honestly, I've, I've had a pretty lucky life where I haven't had those issues with, with depression and anxiety and, and that, that mental health aspect. And I, um, I really felt like me being part of that was, was in a way trying to connect and to understand those that that trauma that that is happening um yeah so yeah i think and that yeah, healing that you're a say. part of that yeah, healing exactly. that you're part of because i yeah. was told <clears throat> or i was taught that sometimes when you run on the land mm -hmm. and you can pray at the same time and it's about um it's about um being able to do that over the territory you pray on the land you pray for the people of the territory you pray for the people in the territory and that running is like a method of prayer mm -hmm. and I didn't really understand that until um later on and all of a sudden it just hit me I'm like this is prayer yeah <laughs> like it just it comes yeah. to you at at some point and 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 I love that that's part of your journey as well yeah it's a very emotional experience um, because this year we ran from the uh, we ran from head of the lake, which is on the uh, on the reserve in Vernon, um, and we ran to the Kamloops Indian Residential School this year. So it was it was it was extra powerful because that news um, that was not a surprise had just emerged, uh, and I think that really 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 spoke to me this year um about about how powerful that connection can really be yeah wow thank you jonathan for sharing uh hunter can you share with us your story and your feelings and your thoughts around that so sorry i was so invested in jonathan's story <laughs> The question was about um, like oh, our connection culture. to culture, right? Okay. Through sport. <laughs> Through sport. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So with softball, definitely, that's really what connected me with my culture. Um, prior to um, receiving the Premier's Award for uh, Aboriginal Excellent Youth Excellence in Sports, sorry, it's a really long title, um, I... I wasn't that invested in many um, cultural or indigenous cultural activities 
um, or traditions. And growing up off reserve too, it's it's not every day that I meet other indigenous people peoples, let alone people from my own nation. And just being part of that community and going to the Gathering Our Voices conference and first for the first time in my life meeting someone from Squilux First Nation that wasn't a family member like I almost cried I was like oh my gosh it's such a small nation like you're here we're sitting next to each other at the same workshop like what are the chances it was really special and you know we've kept in touch and she's like my one connection to um Lillooet because <laughs> all my family lives down here now in uh, the Vancouver Lower Mainland area and um it was really special and just participating in the North American Indigenous Games and all of the opportunities that came with being a BC NAG athlete was just so rewarding. It was just an honor, really. I felt so proud and like very privileged to be there and to compete in the games, playing the sport that I love. And it was like a really large sense of unity that came with like the opening ceremonies to just being on the flight from Vancouver to Toronto, the, every, everyone was so excited. The energy on the plane was just insane. It was such a great experience, definitely one that I won't forget for a long time. And all of the opportunities that have come with competing in NAG and um, they've just really connected me with more Indigenous youth, hearing other people's stories from all over BC and all, all across North America too, not just BC. But um, yeah, it's definitely ignited my passion, I guess, in learning more about myself, my ancestry. And that's why a lot of my UBC academics now is heavily focused around First Nations and Indigenous studies. And it really kickstarted that academic path for me too, as well as uh, my cultural quest, I guess. That's awesome. Oh, Hunter, I love it. It's it's kind of the feeling um, when I think like when our when our people gather, like the aunties just bringing everybody back in. Because I understand that um, away from home, when you don't grow up in community, but just all of a sudden, just the aunties pulling everybody together. You got a big gathering, and then you just feel it. it's electric. You know, you're all together, and and it's just like generations of athletes that have like. Um, because our people have been in sport for for generations and I've heard from the legacies of, of some of the other webinars of, of just those stories where we come together and we compete and warriors and the and the just the electricity I just think it's it's uh it's cool to see it start to keep keep going in our in our generations and it's and it's your guys's time uh Garnet or Taya would you like to share uh yeah so talking about the whole culture aspect of it yeah that was uh definitely the major culture shock was of course nag that was pretty huge I was I felt very proud of myself and I felt just like grateful to have such a cool opportunity like that and so definitely when I went there and like the whole competition aspect of it um i think it the one thing about that was it didn't feel like a normal competition like i i definitely like i went all out of course like i put in some serious effort just like any other swim meet i would go to but in terms of like who was around me I felt um I felt like in some sense it really wasn't a competition at all it just felt so interconnected and not even like I was part of team BC at NAG but like at the same time like it there was just like this connection I felt that felt like there really wasn't any teams we were just all like there we knew it just felt like everyone knew why we were there and like what we were a part of so that was I was, yeah it was pretty awesome to be a part of something like that that's awesome 
I love, I love the things where it takes us a while to kind of articulate something that I feel like you guys are feeling in your soul, like, and you're like, how do I describe that? <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's that connection, that interconnectedness, there's something, that powerful piece that, yeah. um, that you talk of. That's so great. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Or, oh, wait. sorry, Garnet. Yeah, finish. I just want to sort of add on to that. Of course, like, inside like team bc you know they're always trying to get us hyped up cheering on for other swimmers like that of course too because like in swimming it's kind of a hard thing to call it a team sport when you're the only one in the lane racing against another team you could say but yeah like the team aspect of it is of course still important like you should always be cheering on who who's ever in the water you know and and it gets you going it gets that adrenaline going and then like it kind of just feeds off onto everyone like if everyone's cheering everyone's into it it just circles back and forth you know one person's the water you're cheering on for them and you just get more and more excited to be that person in the water because you know you got like a hundred two hundred people behind you right so yeah just screaming i love it Taya? Uh, um, I definitely can relate with Hunter, Garnett, and Jonathan. Um, for me, Meg was, yeah, it was just like a sense of community and connection. And um, yeah, I remember at the games, like, yeah, there's just that chanting and cheering, and you were running faster, and you just had that energy. Um, yeah, and to meet with just, um, other people from across North America. I actually remember talking to someone from uh, just the Yukon and just having a regular conversation, but it was so cool to um, connect through sport and culture. Um, and yeah, through Meg too. Um, before that, I, I hadn't really been very connected um, to my culture. Uh, so it was really cool to just be introduced to some of the music and prayer and to, yeah, the it was amazing, yeah. Um, uh, and just through Neg to some other opportunities just from who I met through with some ice spark and it was, yeah, cool to be connected now and to know and it's amazing. Yeah, once you're in, you're in. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like an infusion. I have a couple of questions here that are going to, oh, for those in university, um, how did you decide which to attend and did sports factor into your decision? Um, were scholarships made readily available to you? So I think I have a couple of university students here and I don't have on my notes who they are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, Hunter, should we start with you? Yes, sure. <laughs> Once again, let me rephrase no. this question. Okay. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did I decide which university to attend, and did sports factor into my decision? So. Okay, <laughs> what motivated me for sports was, you know, the main goal of um, trying to play softball in college or university. And for practically all of high school, that's what I was working towards, you know, extra gym sessions, training sessions after school, just so much extra training went into that just to try and make my goal happen. And in the end, I did have some um, athletic offers from uh, schools in Canada. I knew I didn't want to go to the United States um, due to the political climate at the time, but um, I ended up choosing UBC, even though that was the one school that I did not receive an athletic offer for, um, because overall, I the academics just really <laughs> outweighed the athletics at the time 
UBC has a fantastic um, First Nations and Indigenous Studies program with some really great professors, especially when it comes to um, learning about endangered languages and language revitalization. That was one of the major pull factors for UBC, as well as the fact that it's it's in BC and BC to me is home and I wanted to stay close to my family. So there were a lot of factors that weighed into my decision to attend UBC. Um, I had some academic scholarships for UBC as well. So that was also another pull factor, but um, it was definitely a hard pill to swallow when I accepted my um, admission to UBC and I turned down um, uh, softball um, scholarships elsewhere um, to some other really great schools as well. It was a very tough decision at the time. I thought to myself, you know, what have I been doing for the past four years? It's all for nothing. I wasted my parents' money. Like I wasted my parents' time with, because they were so supportive, right? It, a lot of family support to try and make my goals happen. And so <laughs> I was caught in this rut where I just felt so guilty and just kind of disappointed with myself which was so silly because you know I'm going to UBC like <laughs> there's so many other great things in my life I just couldn't see past it but um you know now I've realized the decisions that I've made have been really good for myself um maybe not what I had envisioned but they're just as good for me if not you know better because I'm really I'm really enjoying my time at UBC and I'm still finding ways to be involved with softball and plans for the future too. you know, hopefully some more coaching. I do have some coaching and instruction uh, practice and experience, but just finding ways to give back to the sport of softball and being involved in sports with UBC recreation and just finding ways to stay involved, but um, still <laughs> moving on with my life too. And it's, it's all come to a very good end, I would say. That's awesome. Thank you, Hunter. That was, there's, I, I totally understand that piece where you're like, oh, like, but it's something about sport is like, that's always something you're going to take with you too. Like all that training, all that dedication, all those lessons, all those pieces, you're not leaving that behind. Those are definitely coming with you. Um, Garnet, do you want to share? Let me know uh, if you want me to repeat it. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be good. Thank you. <laughs> How did you decide which university to attend, and did sports factor into your decision? Right. And whether or not scholarships were readily available for you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so coming out of high school or in high school, I should say I definitely felt as though UBC was the one I was gonna end up at just because yeah definitely at that time I would agree that academics definitely kind of outweighed the athletic part of it and just because like it was just such a great science program down there and just so many opportunities academically and then, but sports definitely were also kind of a part of it going from way up north, like central BC, and then coming down to the lower mainland like that, there's a lot more competition, definitely down the lower mainland. So I felt like going down there kind of was the right move for me in like athletic terms as well. And I did have a couple more applications to other schools for sure. I wanted to kind of put myself out there, see, you know, what, what other opportunities I had. And definitely in terms of scholarships and stuff, UBC kind of worked out that way. I did end up with a major entrance scholarship in my first year. So definitely, at least for my first year, I was like, it felt, it just felt right for sure. That's awesome. That's so great. Taya, do you want to share with us for your sure. experience? Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, for me, um, Simon Fraser University, um, I, 
I was definitely unsure initially. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to maybe like a smaller one. And then, because I was considering, am still considering doing a master's degree after. So I wasn't sure if start somewhere kind of small and then later. So um, eventually I decided on Simon Fraser because um, uh, the campus is located on a mountain. So there's lots of trees and it's just beautiful up there. So I thought that'd be a nice place to learn. Um, for me, uh, my first year was during crazy COVID. Um, so I decided to just focus on my school and my academics. Um, with the being online in my first year, I just didn't know what to expect. Um, so I, I decided just to um, focus on academics uh, for my first year. Um, but now that things are kind of settling down a little bit, um, I'm definitely thinking about just getting back into it um, any way I can. Um, yeah, we'll see where that takes me. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and only because uh, you're on the cusp of university, is it going to factor into your selection? You must be starting to have some thoughts. Um, for me, I think university will almost definitely, like when I'm considering university, sports is going to be something that I'm looking for simply because when I think about it, I'm not going to get another chance to be able to compete in university sports. And it is a new level. Uh, and it's something that I want to, to really push towards. And it is what I'm pushing towards at this point. Um, obviously, like it's going to come down to, to options. And I do still value um, my academics quite highly. Um, but I am I'm definitely going to look for somewhere that I can, can play sports because I feel like if I can be doing something that I love in multiple different ways, I feel like I'm going to be a happier person overall. So I feel like if I can, if I can play basketball in university while studying and keeping myself busy and engaged in multiple different ways, I think it's going to, to, to help me succeed in, in both, in both categories. Um, in in academics as well as in sports and wherever else I may be trying to go um, but yeah I think I think it's definitely going to be a consideration for me that's awesome we're starting to like crunch down in our time and I know um let me see because I I'm like I have a question too <laughs> um I want to know uh what your guys's training looks like in terms of um how do you take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, um, even what your diet looks like? Because sometimes um, when I have conversations and we talk about wellness, a lot of people automatically are like, oh, your physical wellness. But they don't understand that like as athletes, an important component about your physical wellness comes from your emotional, mental, spiritual, and like what you eat, not always, it's not always physical training. And so maybe if you want to share uh, with our audience, um, some of your, your insights on that, and what, what you think, what you believe, what you, what you work on uh, to, to be in a good space to contribute to your wellness, your physical wellness, but your overall. And I'm going to go popcorn. Anybody want this one? Yeah, Garnet. Then Jonathan. All right. Yeah. So definitely the the actual training, the actual that whole side of it, the physical, mental, spiritual aspect, and what you eat definitely is a part of that. Is okay. So in terms of diet, for me in swimming in my second year, um, I was doing. Um, I'm trying to think of the amount of hours I was putting in in a given week. Um, it was about two hours Monday to Saturday. So, and then Tuesday, Thursdays, I was swimming another hour and a half in the mornings there. And then on top of that, we had about hour long wait sessions on like a Wednesday and a Saturday. 
So altogether, that's, you know, it's roughly 17 is what I'm counting. Yeah, 17, 18 hours there. So I, you know, you gotta, you gotta be eating a lot of food for sure. For me, I think I calculated it. Like I, like after going through a weekly grocery shop, usually what I did is I go to the grocery store once a week in university and whatever I brought home, I ate that all during the week and I I like calculated it and I added up all those calories and such and it was roughly like 5,000 calories a day like huge amounts of energy putting into it that way so and I think that's one part of it but looking at like that quantity it was also about the quality I remember there was a quote I had seen, it was some sort of documentary or something. And it kind of, it was like featuring Michael Fells, which was pretty cool. And then one kind of good piece of advice was that um, if you, if you look at like a formula, like really high performance race car, right? You're not going to put really cheap fuel into it, right? You're going to put like the best fuel possible in. So it's going to run the most efficient, it can and that that definitely says a lot because if you're eating right you're eating healthy it's yeah that's definitely a huge part you gotta you gotta recover sure like you can go as hard as you can into every training practice absolutely but in order to keep that up you gotta you gotta be able to pull away for that for a second really focus on um yeah eating you know, getting yourself organized and dealing. And on top of that, with all the school stress and stuff, right, you got to make sure for sure you're getting a lots amount of sleep in there too. So you really got to make sure you are prioritizing a lot of your time into recovery. And yeah, I'd say definitely the biggest piece of advice going into university is really organize yourself, you know, like folk like really focus on like figuring out your schedule you know your your training schedule when and where you're gonna eat and like start meal prepping prepping stuff like that definitely I found my second year I did a thing where once a week I do all my cooking and you know store it all in the fridge and that way you know I come home after practice I already have meals set you know eat there'd be like half an hour there and then once I'm done that you know right back into you know studying or whatever I have to finish off the day and then you know go to sleep you know don't and get to bed yeah, yeah get to bed there's <laughs> if you're if you're not doing anything and it's like 10 o'clock at night you know go to bed you're not gonna regret that <laughs> yeah don't open the screen don't start to play well, just like just go to yeah. bed <laughs> I don't think we talk about sleep as much as we should when we talk about sports and athletic and performance, like such the importance of sleep. Um, So thanks for raising that. Jonathan. Yeah, so I'd probably talk a little bit more about the the wellness or like the mental wellness aspect of it. Um, For me, when I'm sort of like, when I'm going through mental wellness, it's really about being balanced for me um and that's why I still do things in the arts that's why I still do musical theater that's still why that's still why I sing um that's still why I do all of these things that aren't really aren't really for sports at all um it's it's just about being being really balanced as a as a human being um and really doing things that um that aren't always just about competition that aren't always about um that it's it's because that's what i i think that's what sports are is is having fun enjoying yourself um so yes obviously i want to get better i want to put in that work and i do that um but it there are there are times where i have to 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 pull myself away almost and and really focus on other things at all like completely um so that's yeah that's why i still do musical theater and and other other activities that aren't for sports um and when i go for like mental wellness 
in sports, like on the court and on the field and stuff like that, it's, it's really just like, it, it's really about enjoying yourself. It's really about having, having fun and remembering that that's what it's about. And it's not about, oh, am I going to make an error? Oh, am I going to make a mistake? It's like, this is for fun. Let's go. Let's make, make the next point. Let's make the next pass. Great. Let's, let's keep moving forward. Um, yeah, that's what I forgot to say about that. That's awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, I think um, those mental health and, and, and the fuel that you put in your body, I mean, it's all in consideration of overall wellness and how you, how, I mean, ultimately, we also want to pour into the health of your mind so you can get through school and, and come out on the other side as the leaders that you are. And um, I'm wondering uh, if Taya or Hunter, you want to share anything about, I think that because our wellness is all four of those quadrants, I think that there's definitely um, some ex exploration that we do um, in our athletic journey, um, even through an injury um, and in team sports, I think about uh, I mean, you guys have skills and, and things that you bring to the table. Like Jonathan, I kind of came late into some of the sports. And so that feeling of like, I love that idea of just, you're going to go, you're going to have fun no matter what, and trying to keep a good positive dynamic in the team sports. So I have seen some pretty mean dynamics out there sometimes, which isn't very helpful to uh, people that just they don't just want to have fun. Nobody goes out to make a mistake or anything like that, but it really reflects on the quality of the team, the quality of the leadership when, when you have a supportive team and a team that understands and, and is supportive of developing all their players. So um, yeah, just in that mental, emotional, spiritual aspect, did either of you want to share anything? Sure. Okay. If it's okay with Taya, I can go first. Um, yeah, so definitely with, um, like staying well <laughs> emotionally and physically, it's definitely a lot of balance and time management. And, um, I'd say in high school, especially, you know, I was starting school at 7am and finishing at 430 because of this academic program I was in. And then right after that it's like my dad picks me up 4 30 on the dot go home eat <laughs> go to soccer you know go to softball come home and just like working on homework or assignments anything like that till super late in the night you know it was really hard to get all my sleep in and it's just like there weren't enough hours in a day to do everything that I wanted to do or had to do so during those times and even now it's very important to take care of your sleep it's very important to make sure what you're doing makes you happy and finding ways to enjoy what you're doing because not all hard work is easy right it's hard work for a reason and you just got to find the perseverance and when you play team sports or you know any support from your family and friends you know um, going through it all together because all your teammates are students as well. You're all kind of on the same boat complaining like, yeah, I got like a two hour essay I got to work on later. Um, but you know what? Let's win this game. Let's have some fun while we're here. It's, it's just a great support circle to have. And I think that's what really got me um, through those tough high school years is definitely my teammates and, you know, checking in on myself too, making sure I give myself some some me time and doing things uh, that help me wind down too, and just trying to find that balance. But um, yeah, it's definitely not easy, especially in the moments like at softball or soccer. If you make a mistake, you know, you feel bad, you feel guilty. But my method was okay, you can feel sorry for yourself for about 10 seconds, and then you got to get back in the game <laughs> and focus on the next pitch that's coming and figure it out. So yeah, it was definitely great experiences, whether sometimes it was difficult or hard or got me down. It was a great experience nonetheless. And, you know, you develop a lot of skills being an athlete at a young age that you'll carry with that with you through the rest of your life, not just in sport. Awesome. You guys are also wise beyond your years. I just love it. 
Taya. I know that we're kind of creeping close on time. So um, if you have anything to share and then we'll do shout outs. Righty, um, I think Hunter Garnett and Jonathan did an amazing job. They covered a lot of amazing stuff. I definitely agree with all of them. I think balance is key and just having those support systems if you ever need. Go, go to that and always make sure you're taking care of yourself first and taking breaks where you need. And um, yeah, I definitely think um, most important is having fun. Yeah, and with that, amazing things will come, those victories and, and you'll learn so much along the way. And yeah, enjoy the journey. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, did you actually, I'll, I'll end with you too. Um, I'll go around uh, for last, last minute shout outs for each of you. If you want to say hi to some friends and family out there and any last words you might want to say to our audience. And uh, this video will be on YouTube so you can look on it years from now. <laughs> kind of timestamp what you want to say at this point in time in your journey. Um, let's go with, uh, I'll go with Garnet first. Hunter, I'll give you a break on the first question so I can say that I did that, sorry. <laughs> um, way to end it all. I, I definitely think um, that every, everyone should find uh, something they're they're good at and many people can be good at many different things but i say there's always going to be something that truly speaks to you you should i think for me with swimming there is there is moments where in races and stuff and i knew i was doing good i knew i was you know off i was gonna get a, a best time or I was going to place really well in the race and there was just moments like almost like out of body experiences where I knew I could feel the energy in the crowd I could I could I could feel I could hear so many people just cheering us on in the race and it just was such an amazing feeling and you know every race that I felt like that it definitely helped me out when I was having you know if I was not having a good meet or something like that it is just it, in the end it's really a good thing to hold on to because you know those really good races those really fun times and com competitions and stuff they're always going to be circling around they're always going to come back and you're going to keep you're going to keep improving no matter what. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that, Hunt. And uh, Hunter. Um, yeah, so shout outs, I guess. Um, well, obviously, uh, just thank you to all my coaches and, you know, my family. Uh, without all of the adults and leadership and guidance in my life, I, there's no way I would be here for where I am today and all of the opportunities that were provided for me. Um, I appreciate them so much, <laughs> um, but yes, definitely to all other young Indigenous athletes out there, especially, it's just so important to not give up. And <laughs> that sounds really cheesy, but I mean it, um, to not give up and to find that perseverance within yourself you know you might not like something to begin with it might be kind of scary but um if you stick with it you never know it might become one of your larger passions in life and you never know the opportunities that are going to come from putting yourself out there and um sticking with something <laughs> believing in yourself those kinds of things thank you hunter you you both have such wise words um, Jonathan. Okay, so yeah, I'd like to say thank you to all of my coaches, all of my family, everyone who's really helped create an environment for me to feel like I can succeed. Um, and yeah, I'd like to say thank you to all the people who came today um, to listen. And um, I'd like to thank you, Janine, and um, all the other people who were um, involved in helping create this opportunity um 
to help anyone who is open to it. Um, but yeah, I, I think one of the, the values in my family that I think uh, almost everyone can take anywhere um, was something that my grandfather said, and it was, um, it was get up and get out there. Success is something that you're going to make happen. And I think that's, that's something that I pull and I use in my everyday life is like, if I'm going to do something like, let's be there. Like, let's, let's really do it. And in that way, you never hold any regret um, because you were really like, you really put yourself out there. And I think that's something that I, I can take. And I think that anybody can take anywhere in whatever that, in whatever they do, like just put yourself out there um, and don't be afraid of being uncomfortable. So yeah, thank you. Love it. Thank you, Jonathan. Get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. It's like the epitome of an athlete's <laughs> training. It's not going to be fun, <laughs> but we're going to do it. <laughs> Taya, last words from you. Yeah, I just like to say thank you to everyone who attended today and the panelists and Janine, Jordi, Cole, Cynthia, everyone who put this together today. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I hope. Um, one thing I also wanted to say was um, just have fun and make those mistakes too. I know for a long time I was scared to make mistakes and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't going anywhere. Um, until I realized that they are amazing because you learn so much and you grow and you evolve and you become that athlete that you want to be. So make those mistakes, have some fun and yeah, believe in yourself too. You got this. So thank you. Oh, thank you all of you. I feel so honored to have spent this time and space with you all. Um, best of luck with all your future endeavors. You have many of them. And um, I think, I, I don't like speaking for other people, but I think everybody that's watching this is just like cheering you on, as well as all of your generations of ancestors that have gone before you. I just, I wish you all the best of luck and I hope you have a fantastic week, finish off your years at school. And I mean, I'm just so proud of you. I've done nothing to contribute to it, but I'm just so proud of all of you guys. So thank you so much for sharing your vibrancy and your energy and your words of wisdom um, for future generations. Thank you so much for that.